Hi, I'm Pat Gunn, and this is a video that's about waking up with Sam Harris number 62, What is True with Jordan B. Peterson. I've been aware of uh, Sam Harris for some time. He's been pretty popular among certain parts of the atheist community. Um, and I think part of this is that he networks well with people and uh, he's been willing to put his neck out and do a lot of publicity uh, type things. I don't think of him as being a particularly uh, great thinker. Um, his book, The Moral Landscape, was philosophically infantile. It attempted to uh, grab onto the idea that somehow you can objectively reach answers to moral questions, um, which is not a position that's particularly uh, defensible. I've never seen a particularly good defense of it, and his argument is particularly off. Um, at least one of the arguments contained uh, in that book is that uh, uh, by observing historical trends, we see a certain uh, type of pattern, and we should accept that pattern based on the idea that what people all really want is a certain t uh, type of flourishing. That's a dramatic oversimplification uh, of the argument. If you're actually curious about it, go ahead and read the book. I don't uh, particularly respect him as an intellectual, but uh, I don't, I'm not averse to your sending money uh, his way. And curiosity is really what should drive us in terms of understanding issues. Um, but I, I don't consider it an even remotely good argument. It got an un, uh, a lot of unwarranted traction, and I think it it's not doing particularly good thing uh, things to philosophy as a field. And it's not the only work of his that I'm aware of, but it's certainly, in my view, the worst. Um, as for Jordan Peterson, I'm aware of, of him more than I have seen much of what he's had to say uh, directly. Um, uh, he has been talked about a lot in certain uh, communities that I'm part of, in particular communities that are left-leaning but hostile to a lot of the identity politics slash critical theory parts of the left. Um, and. So I, I, I don't think that the term hero is exactly warranted, but at least on a certain set of issues, uh, I appreciate him being outspoken, and I largely agree with him, particularly on pronouns uh, and particularly on identity politics and other issues. Uh, I share a fair number of his criticisms of the left. And so I was, I was curious to see, I saw it mentioned on Twitter, that the two sat down uh, to chat uh, and apparently it didn't go particularly well. And, um, and so I, I recently sat down and watched maybe about three quarters of it. It started to get seriously repetitive. And so I turned it off at that point. Um, it's possible that I missed something, but based on, um, Sam Harris's summary, uh, at the start of how it went, I don't think I actually did. And... So this is the gist of, of what happened, as far as I can tell. Um, Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson initially started talking about Peterson's uh, standing up against, um, uh, against some of the efforts to force inclusive language in Canada's uh, legal code. And I see those efforts as being very bothersome. I empathize with Jordan Peterson. He did come across as being kind of ranty, but uh, but I, I suppose generally when you uh, go uh, when you put yourself on the air, uh, you often you don't have the luxury of doing rewinds or saying you know I'm not going to publish that or otherwise applying the editor's pen. So I think we have to be kind of forgiving in terms of certainly tone issues, stuff like that. Um, and so moving on a little bit from that topic, uh, uh, I think Harris and Peterson, are, uh, uh, Harris at least already knew that there were some areas where they disagreed. And so he wanted to discuss Peterson's notions of, of truth. 
And it turns out that Peterson has some somewhat unusual notions of truth. Uh, of course, being involved in philosophy, having unusual definitions for things is pretty normal. Many philosophers that I've known, people interested in philosophy, people who write, um, even people who do it professionally, although I think that by no means is it necessary to do philosophy professionally to do philosophy or to call yourself a philosopher. But generally, people have unusual views because when you look at all of the potential views out there, when you read a lot of books, you'll come across unusual perspectives, definitions, goals, uh, ways of thinking about things. And they're not, uh, they differ a lot from each other and they differ a lot from the mainstream. So generally, you're bound to, almost bound to, have some unusual definitions and, and so on. Uh, if you if you spend time thinking about philosophy. And so Jordan Peterson has a somewhat unusual notion of truth that is very uh, operant. Uh, it's, uh, I, I think on this particular definitional issue, my notion of truth is a little bit closer to Sam Harris's in that we have notions of truth that attempt to be objective. They attempt to be raw facts about reality. They might be, they might not guarantee that they're in a particular context, or uh, or that they'll be useful. But they have a strong correspondence with reality. Now, Sam Harris, I think that uh, he, uh, as revealed in in the book that I uh, I criticized of his earlier. His notion of what is potentially true is much broader than mine, and it involves uh, it involves uh, moral questions. Uh, to me, a moral question never has an answer that's potentially true or false. It might depend on on facts, but it itself is of a different kind of beast. Um, but but apart from that. Um, I'm closer to, to Harris on this issue than I am with Peterson in the sense that uh, Jordan Peterson sees truth as being uh, in the context of being helpful for humanity. Uh, and he, he, he puts a, a lot of weight on the importance of things being helpful for humanity rather than being... Uh, just gung-ho about finding out everything is true, and he thinks that the right way to approach this is to weld the definitions of truth and leaning towards human prosperity. Um, he calls this Nietzschean, but at least in all of my studies of Nietzsche, I haven't come across perspectives similar to this. It's possible that I might have missed some passages, um, but I have read uh, Nietzsche's books conclusively, and I, I don't remember seeing anything like this, but, um, or, or it's possible that it's just a re uh, reasonable extension of ideas in Nietzsche. I, I could buy that. Um, I agree with some of Harris's criticisms on the utility of this notion of truth, but I also uh, generally expect that people will have differing definitions on core concepts of or I mean on core components of how they see the world and in general I think the, the most useful thing to do in that case is to just identify them find some kind of a consensus term not meaning to, uh, things like for example the, the way that I would have dealt with this if I were approaching this from Sam Harris's perspective would be to say well okay then let's not talk about the word truth and let's talk about the word fact because I, I think uh, um, Jordan Peterson's notion of fact just came out in the discussion is more or less the same thing as what Sam Harris calls truth and so you could have just said okay well let's discard the uh, or let's for purposes of the rest of the discussion that we'd like to have let's not talk about truth and let's talk about what you call fact and what I call truth and that is a nice way to just move past definitional issues and uh, go ahead. Uh, I think this is where Sam Harris displayed a lack of philosophical sophistication and that he wasn't able to let go that they weren't using the same definitions for a word. 
and he just kept on hammering at uh, at Peterson over how he defines the, uh, the term truth, which really there's no reason to do that. Uh, if you can just uh, set aside uh, set aside the term or at least try to and find uh, if, even if there's a mismatch in the particular words that are used by both people, you can move beyond that and to say, well, you can call it this, I'll call it that, and we can have further interesting discussions. Instead, for Sam Harris, this was just a something that he was willing to completely stop the discussion, uh, discussion over. He wasn't willing or able to move further on this. And that, I, I just see it as a terrible flaw. Now, there was a, a moment, maybe about 60% uh, or so of the way through, where Sam, or where Jordan Peterson poked a bit back at Sam Harris for noting that they really were kind of doing the same thing in the sense that Sam Harris was uh, had had an expansive uh, and kind of slippery notion of truth in order to in include uh, notions of truths about morality. I thought that was kind of a interesting point to make. It wasn't a point that I was entirely sympathetic with uh, because I don't share Jordan Peterson's definitions uh, in terms of truth. But at the same time, I'm not hostile to them. I uh, Again, I just find the notion of the definitions that we use to be something that you just note it, you move on. Uh, and I mean, maybe you, you poke somebody a little bit uh, about, um, about the utility of certain definitions. But in the end, there's not a lot that you can do when somebody is uh, just defined something differently than you do like uh it's if it's a big part of their perspective you're not going to get them to budge and there's no real reason to try to get them to budge uh in in the vast majority of cases now maybe if it weren't just about definitions and it were about uh, uh about uh like what happened or is there an object there? Is this uh, our best available understanding of history? Things like that. Maybe at that point you do kind of have to struggle over that. But a definition, it's virtually never worth uh, worth uh, doing that. There's virtually never a reason to do it. And so I just, uh, I mean, my feelings about Sam Harris are not particularly uh, charitable to begin with. But this was just another demonstration of his lack of philosophical uh, sophistication but uh, I mean it's kind of interesting though to just have this available uh, to point people at in terms of the kinds of discussions that people can get into and how they can go wrong when people can't deal with other people not uh, defining things the same way that they do it happens surprisingly often uh, I mean I've uh, very very occasionally lost friendships with people who have an overly inflexible understanding of uh, of language, who really insisted, I mean, in, in some cases, like the, the original definition of a term should be the one that uh, gets used forever. Very occasionally I've bumped into those people and they were unwilling to let go that I use a lot of terms in pretty boring standard ways uh, that the mainstream uses and they might know uh, Latin and they might be really bothered that uh, that the original Latin meaning of a term isn't the one that's being used today and so they really can get pushy in everyday conversations that everybody use uh, uses language the same way that they do um, and uh, and I mean there have been other instances of that uh, I there's not a lot I can do in those circumstances because I'm not uh, I'm not going to budge just based on the comfort of somebody else. I'm not going to budge uh, uh, to get along with them. I will usually pretty frequently say, well, let's move past this and just accept that we don't define uh, words the same way. Um, uh, and again, uh, because I, I sympathize with Jordan Peterson's position on pronouns and stuff, uh, I generally don't have a lot of issue with activists who want to use weird pronouns within their own communities. I really only have an issue if they attempt to push it into the legal sphere, which uh, according to Peterson is happening in Canada, and I would 
be very strongly opposed to that if I were, well, actually, I'm pretty strongly opposed to that, even though I'm not Canadian or in the workplace or things like that. I really don't like uh, speech codes uh, and having my arm twisted. Uh, and in the same way, I, I wouldn't appreciate Sam Harris not accepting uh, if I if we were to get into an argument about uh, about uh, how I define terms, I probably wouldn't appreciate it much if he were unwilling to let things go and accept that for any philosophically aware people, they're not going to define all their words the same way. There's a lot of words out there that are contentious. Uh, and if you really dig deep, you can find, uh, I, I would guess at least 20% of the words that we use will have some wiggle room. And it doesn't usually cause an issue because language is more of a functional tool than a tool for absolute rigidity and precision. And that's probably a good thing. I mean, it might even help with certain types of creativity. But you got to let those things go. Anyhow, those are my thoughts on the issue. I'll include a link to the, uh, to the video that I'm commenting on uh, in the subject area uh, here. And uh, that's it. And again, since I haven't done one of these in a while, I pretty uh, when I'm talking about philosophy or current issues or things like that, I'll just do, do one of these whenever either the mood strikes me or if I feel inspired by an event or I see a rant or my attention is drawn to something. If you, for some reason, would like to see me uh, talk about an issue, uh, let me know somehow, drop me an email, uh, and I'll, I'd be happy to, to make a video on things that people find interesting. Uh, um, otherwise, it'll just be whenever, I, uh, whenever it pops into my head that I should do it. Anyhow, take care. Bye-bye.